I'll do a quick video of uh, unboxing a EVA robot. Um, this is actually a robot that um, um, I've known about for quite some time. Um, we actually were lucky enough to actually trial like a beta version um, almost a year ago um, uh, at our company and um, yeah, really liked it. It's sort of a, a, a low-end industrial robot. Um, there's a lot of sort of toy robots that uh, Wow, we even go up to a thousand pounds, but they really are just toys. They're quite primitive things, and the repeatability on them, and the load carrying, and the features they have, interface, all that sort of thing is, is very crude. Um, sometimes they they sell it uh, quite well, but when you get hold of them, uh, um, they're not much good. Whereas this is, um, at all intents and purposes, does everything that. Uh, an industrial robot does, um, but on a smaller scale. Um, when I was looking for this robot, uh, uh, well, when I was looking for a robot about a year ago, um, I discovered that uh, the likes of the, the Fanex and the Kukas were uh, minimum £20,000 and uh, quite a steep learning curve, whereas this is only a fraction of that and um, a lot more sensible user interface and uh, um, just really well thought through. Great for sort of a um, office, uh, sort of office or um, light industrial environment. Um, yeah, so this is it. So what have we got? So we've got the the robot itself. We've got power supply. We've got um, emergency stop and power cable. We've got tool, um, and we've got a series of manuals, technical get you know quick start ones and all that sort of stuff. The tool um, initially confused me because I hadn't seen anything about that before and I had a quick look in the manual um, and it was for the emergency brake release so this robot comes with a, a lot of features and um, one of the cool things is that um, if you have an emergency or a power cut um, rather than the robot just sort of going completely limp and sort of dropping on someone or or if they got me you know, imagining it's holding an expensive part it just doesn't drop it's actually got like a, a clutch slash sort of brake uh, mechanism so um, uh, that all the joints lock um, and that tool I'm guessing must be if you happen to want to override it um, you can um, override it and all these I just had a quick look in one of these um, um, like a little rubber uh, grommets on the on the joints there's a little hole in there so you can put the tool in um, so quick tour around the robot um, okay so at the back we've got power as before I said you've got Ethernet um, USB and also the power connector. There's also two other connectors for um, attachments, um, and then you've the, the green block is all the I/O. So you've got um, digital in and out, and you've also got analog in and out, and also 24 volt power and ground. And, and 24 volt is um, the standard for using on industrial robots for the accessories, etc. It's not to say you couldn't use things on other voltages, 5 or 12, um, that's not an issue. Um, um, but you just have to convert it down. Um, on the front of the robot, you see there's two buttons. Um, these are important and uh, one of the key aspects of the robot. So this is a collaborative, collaborative robot. Um, and if we have a look in here, I think it does get the names right because someone's bound to ask yes there we go um waypoint button and back driving button so the, the back driving button is the bottom one and um, what that means is when you press that button the the robot doesn't go limp um but it takes off the the, the brakes um but it also applies enough power to the motors to um make it easy to move around um so it's it's just taking lifting the weight for you and then you can actually move the robot around um, just by holding that button down and moving it into position um, you let go and then you can actually press the the top button to mark a waypoint so it knows where it is in space um, and very precisely actually um, and you press that point and it, it stores that waypoint and then in the software um, which, which is another critical aspect of the this robot so uh, this uh, robots basically got an intranet built in so you can actually log into it via Wi-Fi or Ethernet and you uh, fire up a browser um, and you have the control software in, in the browser and um, you can see all the waypoints 
Um, uh, you can modify the waypoints. You can uh, link the waypoints together so you can come up with um, um, uh, movements of, of going between the waypoints. You can do different things like you could do like a, a, a rapid move between waypoints, or you can go do a slower move or an arc to move. Um, and you can also build in logic as well. So you say if or I don't know, say if one of these uh, digital inputs is high, do this, if one of them's low, do that. And, and then you can also say, um, um, when I've got to this point, um, you know, put power on, on, on this um, digital out. And um, yeah, it's, it's um, really quite good. It's also got um, uh, API as well. So if you don't want to use the uh, interface you can just use the API um, that's the application programming interface so you can just write some script and say move to this coordinate move to that coordinate etc um, and um, for us that is um, quite useful and you can also actually um, another good thing about the API and the software was that um, uh, you can actually program in a number of waypoints and store that as a sort of particular move or a, something in the, the sort of timeline in the actual software, and then the API you could actually call that maneuver. Um, so go to various different waypoints. So it's incredibly useful. Um, so you've got a um, connector there. So that's going to be for um, uh, uh, attachments. Um, so I've got some. Um, I've got a gripper that I'm going to install uh, soon with it. Um, so yeah, very impressed so far. Just been having a look through the um, one of the technical references, and um, yeah, it's really nice to to see they've gone into quite a bit of detail um, uh, about the actual robot and how to use it. So um, really nicely laid out how all the different ports there, sort of the grounds, power, twenty four volts. Um, uh, yeah, so actually that that one there, that it's so the uh, port one was for the emergency stop. Port two is unused, um, and then the third one is for the tool tooling one. So um, yeah, um, and they've got all the, um, uh, the all the different um, pins, what all the different pins on the actual ports do, etc. And they've gone into great detail about uh, all the electrical characteristics which is really nice to see um, yeah and I, where did I see somewhere um, yeah they've even listed the, the power supply and um, for the, the the actual connectors as well they've actually listed where you can get them from again that's a really nice little touch to uh, to see that in a manual that uh, um, really is very encouraging um, and yeah they've, they've listed all the uh, the movements on it So, a few minutes later, I've uh, basically configured um, the network. So basically, just um, it's got a Wi-Fi access point. So I just connect to the network, um, put in the password, um, uh, set a username, etc., and, and I'm in. Um, so this is the interface. So you've got like the dashboard, the viewer. That always used to be the on/off button. Yes, that's the lock. Um, config so that's just got the, the Wi-Fi various other things like um, um, it's got uh, things where you can update the software and also if you need to send off like r report log um, debug logs that sort of stuff and then you've got uh, on this one it's uh, just for profile and documentation so you can different use etc so if my memory serves me correctly, and if it still does the same thing, if I click on that, um, what we should get now is um, if we create a new, new, new toolpath. Um, so this is this is the main thing of the interface. Um, it's updated a little bit, um, but yeah. So if we go on here, if I click this button, um, not yet. Um, what do I need to do?
right, so this is for the timeline, so controls go home. So I'll just press the button on the side there. I'm not sure what it's doing. It's going really like a ready orangey colour. Hmm. I wonder if the emergency stop is actually in. Aha! That'd be the problem. So if we now. may have just rebooted it. Right, this is looking much promising then. So I had the emergency stop on, so uh, my error. should read the manual. <laughs> um, so um, I'm guessing that I can now if I just re-log in again. Right, so I just got it because I uh, basically turned Eva on and off. Uh, and I now need to log back in. Fortunately, I think we should be saved. Oh, everything should be saved. There we go. Right, so back in, if I press this. Okay, so now we can see we've got lights at the front. So if I hold that down. Yes, I can move it. Okay, if it Can also hear the motors go in. So if I get to the viewer. So do that. Right. So what I can do is let's just try this again. So if I move the robot around, you see that? See how it's moving around on the screen, so it knows where it is in space. Or it knows where all the joints are, etc. Um, that's good. Okay, well, that is just a little introduction. I shall, probably the next video, I will have set up a few movements, etc. I thought it would be quite interesting to give like a, a very quick demo of how you use um, Eva and sort of putting in some waypoints and just um, showing the user interface. So, okay, so we've got Eva in this position, it's sort of being replicated. Um, on the actual screen, if I just zoom out a little bit, see a little bit better. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to store a waypoint, so I'm just going to press the top button, and the waypoint is now stored. So if I click on the yellow bit, that's where it's positioned, it should come up where I've got a uh, position, it's number four. I, I was playing around earlier. So what I can do is well, let's put in some more waypoints first. So I'm going to move Eva around and um, I'm just going to. It's a bit difficult to do with one hand. Okay, right, there we go. Um, I'm going to store the waypoint. Waypoint stored, and then I'm going to go around and move Eva again to another position. And I'm going to store the waypoint. Okay, so I've now got three waypoints. Um, so if we go and have a look on the screen, you can see that these are actually positioned. So these are actually four, five, and six, which is in there. And it's quite nice actually that they've put like a little silhouette so you can see where Eva was at that position. So we can put all this into the timeline and it's got drag and drop. So all I have to do is drop down there, that's number one, uh, and drop that one down there, and then here, um, because you can either select where it, the position is now, or it shows you that uh, things that are nearby, it just so happens that those are the same, but uh, yeah, um, so I can slide that together, uh, so now we've got um, three waypoints in there, so if I home either oh no 
and I have to upload, I believe. Uh, so let's just click out of that. Upload all the points. So that's uploaded to Eva. And now I click home. So Eva just moved around. Um, so now if I hit play, what you should see is Eva sort of um, just moving, moving around. So let's see if we can do that. Didn't quite click it. Ah, yes. Um, so now I can say whether it's continuous or just one. So I'm going to say just one. Okay, so it just did those three waypoints, just just like that. Um, and you can change the speed of it and um, all those sorts of things. And uh, yeah, so yeah, loads of things to to do it. Oh, actually, if we just click on a waypoint, I'll show you some other things as well. So you can delete waypoint, you can label the waypoint, that's useful. I don't think that was there before. Um, you can clone the waypoints um, and also you can move it. So if you wanted to move the waypoint um, um, just ever so slightly, um, you could do that. So we could go in and uh, well, let's actually just change this one. Let's just say so X, Y, Z. So what if we change that to say um, one seven five? I'm going to move. That's just moved it up a little bit. Okay. Um, right. So that will have stored it. So if we then go upload and uh, play again, it should. Oops. Um, turn continuous off. And then hit the one. Oh uh, yeah, so I have to go home first. My mistake. There we go. So if we try again, play. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, yeah, so that's um, the first little go with either.